Hey, Creative Weirdos. So today we're going to do the second part of how to make a short film. So we're going to talk about pre-production. So in pre-production, once you have your script done, and in this case, you can see the script, um, two versions, the, script, the original script and the shooting script. And that's in Final Draft, if you know how to use Final Draft, or I think it's called Celtex. That's another good app. I use Final Draft. Uh, it's pretty fun. It is expensive, but it's worth it. There's older versions that are cheaper. You can get online and yeah, check that out. So when you look at the actual shooting script for pre-production, it's very different because there's the way I did it was if you look at it, everything's structured the same, but the difference is there's numbers for each section of each scene. So this is a scene heading, you know, you have the exterior, downtown street, day. So that says it all, but each section in between can be a cut. Same scene, but there's cuts. So the way I did it is, say once this is all one scene, a good example would be here. This is interior and exterior montage day. So these are, each paragraph is like its own mini scene within the scene. And it's usually either the same location sometimes or multiple locations. But these numbers correspond to how they're going to be put together in the end and as well as what day I'm going to shoot, which one's in order. So if you look at it from the beginning, this is like the third scene right here. Exterior, downtown street day, and it's 11A. So there's 11, hopefully there's 11B if I remember. And this is the beginning of the script, but it's not shot on the same day. So what you're trying to do in pre-production is first of all, do the budget and try to organize your shoot days. And for me, this was, it was all me the whole, you know, I was wearing all the hats and getting from script to a shooting script and to actually shooting it, you have to plot out your days. And in this case, I had four weeks in total and I shot every Wednesday. And those days were the days that Isaac was off work because there was no budget to pay anybody. And you'll find people, if you can, actors, people who want to be actors, et cetera, et cetera. You'll find people that could be in your film. And in this case, I already wrote this script for him specifically with him in mind because I knew him for years. I wanted to see, you know, the original concept was not this final product. And typical is you would make, you would have a concept, but you know, realistically, we all have dreams. Realistically, you have your concept and the final product, depending on, the, sadly, the budget, et cetera, et cetera, will determine what the final product actually is. And in this case, there was really no budget other than tech budget. So we had the actor, check. We had the location, check, which was his place, his. So that's two in one right there. Amazing. So once we had that, now what can we do in that space? It's like the way I, you know break down a lot of things or try to tell people is if you have a piece of paper and you're a designer and artist, this is your parameter. So say if it was like up here, the width was eight, you know, here, and it would be 11. It would be the, obviously the reverse of eight and a half by 11, just, you know, landscape. This is your parameter. Most people think this is just like a limitation. It's not. Once you know the rules, you can bend it. You can bend and do whatever you want. You can go for a bleed. You can do all these aspects. You can use negative and positive space. It's the same thing as framing as well in, in shooting cinematography, you know. So once you know the rules or the parameters or the limitations of your concept, and then in terms of your budget, et cetera, et cetera, who you have, what you have, what you have in your disposal. I had my gear, I had it for years. 
because I was working in film already. I was a unit stills photographer for film and other aspects. And prior to that, I was in different industries like advertisement, art directing, and uh, fashion for a while. So knowing your tools and what you can do with those tools is everything. So for me, I had the gear, I had the actor, I had the concept, and I wanted to make a short film with those tools. Now, the factors that come in in pre-production, obviously, is the budget, time, you know, it's a clock, terrible. Uh, once you have these things, and those things will affect you, so let's go back. So we have money affects you, time affects you, location, and there's other, obviously, things you have, you know, people's availability. Since you're not paying these actors, their availability, you're kind of beholden to these aspects that will either hinder you or make, a, make it a benefit. But you always have to be flowing when you're creating this short film. So for me, those four days, technically it was five days in total, but it was April of this year. And every day I try to get as much scenes as I could, depending on practical, you know, the sun and everything like that, how much I had Isaac at the time, all these things that I can try to get done. And the from the big, from the first day to, let's just say the fifth day, because there was a fifth day that was never used, but we still shot stuff, to the fourth day, the film dramatically changed because there were scenes that were cut from the script that were either never shot. There's dialogue that were never shot, you know? So it's like different timelines, different versions to the final product. And that's always gonna happen even on a big budget film. You'll get cuts, things don't look right when you actually shoot them or for whatever reason, it just doesn't work. So you have to always have either have backups or you have to go with the flow and say if, you have to say if A doesn't work, we have B and we have C. You have to know, you know, which out of all of them, which one's gonna work. If you know your whole story or your whole concept, you can kind of maneuver and also not lose the essence or the theme of what you're exploring. So you got a budget, and in this case, the budget of the film, realistically and honestly, most of the money really went to the gear. And the gear was, here's a terrible drawing of a bike. <laughs> um, you have your, uh, you have this, uh, you know, you have your frame, etc. So there was this arm extension, and it had... Isaac's phone and he would be here on it. I don't know why I'm drawing so terribly today, but but it would be this arm here. If I change the color, this arm here was literally the budget. You know, my camera gear was obviously in the thousands um, when you accumulate all the parts of the gear that I had. But and as before, the actor was you know, he was volunteering. Uh, the other actor, same thing. Everything was, there's roughly four actors. One was just a voice, which was at Isaac's mom, who actually is his, his real mom on the phone and everything like that. And everyone volunteered. And everyone was people that I already knew. And sometimes even last minute. And in the film, there's, I'll give an example. So all of this, this beginning shot was just him actually training. This is me. I the, the, This was me shooting. This was us in literally 30 minutes. This whole beginning scene was just us 30 minutes running around King and Bay. And these shots, all of this is all four days, roughly. And for example, that's my cousin next up right there that's my cousin he was here in the city just for a short while and i said hey do you want to be in a short film he says yes let's do it this scene was 15 minutes and you can see 
the full commentary about the whole film in another YouTube video linked below. So you can see that this was literally 15 minutes. They met that day, probably 10, let's say 30 minutes prior to that. And we walked to this office to shoot this. So all of this is impromptu. So your budget and everything, everything changes from beginning to end. So once I had the script, it changed, as I said before. And I'm kind of happy it changed to the final product. Because I, along the way, you learn things. And in the future, when you have, say, you want to go back into this concept of this film or the original version that you didn't get to do, and you have more money, you can do it. And you know the pitfalls that happened in this film, like what you could have done or you couldn't do or what you did well. And you can improve upon that. So the reality is, and I'll be honest, short films don't make money. They're not really about money. They're more of a portfolio, you know? They're just like, show, it's like a resume. It shows what you can do, you know, your skills. That's what it really is. But it's also a way for you to ex express yourself, prove a concept. You know, a lot of um, even big directors and they make this proof of concept. Sometimes these short films are just proof of concept. It's like, this is what they can do or showing their directorial skills because obviously the film industry is all about money and you need a return, you know? And a short film is small investment compared to the larger film. So make a short film. Don't don't take yourself too seriously. Have fun. Just do it. As I say in other videos you can see on YouTube. But just honestly, just I'll swear, but fuck it. Just create something. Shoot something. Do proof of concept. You know, in other videos you can got theme. Theme is just asking a question. It's like, why am I here? You know? That could be in what what like how would you interpret that how would you show that in a film who are the characters that will best express this theme where location and obviously these factors are affected by money time etc yeah so go for it just go for it and just do it till next time we're gonna get into the actual shooting and post-production Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification. Also check out our website for free educational downloads. If you're looking for more story tools, check out our new Story Planner Notebook, a guided story structure composite notebook that gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to plot your upcoming story. Now available on our website as an ebook and soon a physical book on Amazon and other platforms. And if you're interested, we offer creative consulting, and more information, check out the website in the description below. Till next time, weirdos, peace out.